We're looking at a serious bit of kit today, the Winwing HOTAS system composed of the Super Libra joystick base, Super Taurus throttle base, and the FA-18 flytops panel, joystick and throttle handles. For transparency, this unit was sent to me by Winwing for review. We'll be going over my first impressions, I plan on covering the system again later for a full review once I've had some time to see how it performs over the longer term. Winwing produce commercial flight training equipment, so I've got high hopes for this enthusiast level hardware. So with that, let's get into it. Weighing as much as a bicycle at 15 kilograms or 33 pounds, the Winwing HOTAS system is packaged with a lot of foam protecting it. Inside we've got the HOTAS and most of the tools required to assemble it. Lots of bits, including magnetic logos, mounts, and optional twist axis and extension. Some assembly is required and it is a bit of a task to do, with a number of screws and pieces. As a word of caution, don't drop the screw handles through the throttle grooves. Yeah. I'd cover those up whilst you're working. The throttle is rather unusually designed, you can swap out the handles to another type reusing the base. When we are planning on an F16 throttle later down the line. The provided and keys work for most of the assembly, but you will need a spanner to assemble the mounts for the throttle. This took a fair amount of work, and I would like to have seen fewer screws and bolts, but everything came together over the course of an hour and a bit. My biggest gripe is the connectors for the joystick are on wires, rather than mounted into the frame. This can cause a little issue as the connector can disappear inside or be difficult to insert. They also don't look like the strongest, and if you don't pay attention, you could twist the wire by mistake when mounting it. These are not designed to be taken apart and removed or swapped regularly. You can also pull off the logo patches if they're not your sort of thing. Both are designed to be mounted rather than standalone desktop use. The table mounts for the throttle and joystick are fairly plain without any styling. They come with some spaces for smaller sized desks to provide better stability. This is a rather inelegant solution and can make mounting them on your desk a little bit of a challenge as the blocks have a habit of moving as you tighten the screw. This combined with holding the unit up at the same time almost makes this a two person job. If you are looking to regularly remove the desk mounts, you're going to find this becoming a bit of a chore to set up and remove. You'll want a reasonably strong desk to mount this, although I found the Winwing throttle and panel to weigh about the same as a Warthog throttle. The only trouble is the size, giving it some leverage over your desk. Once set up, they're reasonably secure, with most of the wobble coming from my desk itself. The throttle base does move a little, but that's to be expected given its size. I've not noticed this to be an issue during gameplay. Whilst the throttle is secure, Winwing do recommend some support from below if you intend to rest your arm on top of the throttle, which is something I may consider doing. With everything set up, we'll um, get back to setting it up. There's a wealth of switches to bind. For brevity's sake, I bound the HOTAS to the DCS FA18C, mostly matching their intended functions. Rather unusually, most of these switches have inputs for all positions. This is actually very handy for any DCS module that supports specific switch positions, and is greatly appreciated for convenience. Although it also means there's a larger number of inputs, so older games like Falcon BMS will not be able to read them or requiring a software workaround. The panel does not quite match up with the real panel of an FA-18 Hornet, but rather is a truncated version with some extra switches like the bleed air, battery, pito, copied over from the opposite panel. For those of you looking for an exact replica, this might be an issue, but I find it to be quite a good addition. Getting into the cockpit and starting up the aircraft, it's quite handy to have a full panel beside you. You can multitask, operating the left side by hand while you adjust others with your mouse with the right hand. With very little creative binding, such as reusing the ground power switches, I can see it being possible to perform a complete startup using just this panel. The APU light on the panel can be controlled within the software, although I do not have access to it at the time, because it is still in translation. It will be possible to program this light to light up in response to button inputs, such as the APU being switched on. Unlike the Warthog throttle, we have no flap switch, which is a minor issue, there's also no gear knob, Although we gain a wealth of others, like the lighting panel for brightness knobs, and the fuel control. I've found the throttle panel quite enjoyable to use, and relatively easy to find switches blindly, even with my limited time with it, which would be quite helpful for VR. The throttle has two detents, the idle cutoff and mill afterburner detent. 
Both are accessed by raising the finger lifts, although the afterburner detent can be reached by forcing your way through it without the lift if you're in a hurry. The military power detent almost lines up perfectly in DCS, reaching about 98 to 99% of military power, so you may wish to adjust the curves ever so slightly. When you enter the off detent, a button input is passed on, however if you leave the detent into idle, there is no input. I think personally I'd rather have it the other way around, this is something that can probably be solved with software. The friction lever acts as both a control for the throttle friction, but also as an axis, I've bound this two cameras in for now, but being double purpose, this is a bit of an issue and I'm not quite sure why they went with both. The mount for the joystick is fairly wide, and this can cause issues when you fully extend it if you're using a narrow set of rudder pedals such as my CH Pro pedals. There is enough room if you keep the pedals close, but it may rub up against your legs slightly when extended. For this reason I'd recommend you cable tie the wires to the mount to clear your legs and avoid getting entangled. I'll be using the optional adjustable extension, this will extend the joystick by about 11.5cm up to 155 half. There is also a twist attachment, although I've not looked into this as the firmware requires an update before I can use it. For this video we'll be keeping the out of the box setup with extension, but this is highly configurable including external access to the dampening clutches. But if you're willing to get your hands dirty and take it apart you'll be able to configure the springs and cams inside. Getting into the controls we've got many buttons at our fingertips although I found a few of them a little sharp on the edges. The mini stick in particular is great, it has a hard plastic switch top which I would have preferred if it was rubberized, but the inputs feel precise making it easy to operate the sensors. This is a big upgrade over the standard Warthog SLU and comparable to the Delta SIM mod I've installed on my own Warthog. The antenna innovation is a self-centering axis, this is great for aircraft like the Hornet, although it might present an issue for aircraft such as the F-16, which use an absolute position for the axis to adjust its radar antenna. The side of the throttle has our standard air brake switch, and a number of five-way hats. These buttons honestly feel a little too small, I'd have liked to have seen them be a little larger to make them easier to move. The hat buttons have a noticeable click, but do not cross directly from one side to the other. There is a plus shaped channel preventing you from going directly. This is a little odd compared to others as you'll have to return to centre then go to the next position. All the hats have an extra push function on them, so I've taken to binding my track IR recenter to the trim hat down action, which is quite handy. The only issue is this little guy here, the Reke switch. This is a 5 way hat and honestly it feels quite fragile, it's unsatisfying to use with little to no tactile feedback. This led me to accidentally push the button cap off with too much force when I was trying to actuate it. Thankfully it was an easy job to just pop it back on, I feel a single button would have been a better fit here, rather than trying to cram an extra hat in. The second stage of the trigger I found to be a little deep, requiring you to almost press against the handle to activate it, but this is not bad necessarily by any means. The paddle switch and pinky are easily reachable without having to reposition your hand, with the wind wing joystick being slightly smaller than the Thrustmaster equivalent. With all that, we'll quickly cut into a little gameplay to show it all in action. So we're in the Eagle Dynamics Strike Fighter mission, this was a mission of the week a while ago, and we'll just get ourselves up quickly as we are really thrown into the thick of it right away. So we've got two targets coming in at us, just going to IFF them with sensor select, depress. So they're both hostile, we'll lock one up. We are 28 miles and our wingman's in burner. We're about the same speed though, so I'll hold off just yet. And we'll get some separation, we're going to attack these guys and set up our weapons as well while we're at it. Actually at this range we will, we will use loft mode, but so we are starting to fall behind our uh, lead now, so afterburner's on. Right, and Fox 1. We'll fire as well. There we go. So we're at uh, 10 miles now, we're going to come up to the right. 
keep them in view on our helmet sight. That one's turned back in. Our guy's still defensive, he's tracking off to our right flanking, but the guy on the left is still coming our way. I don't think anyone fired on him, unfortunately. We picked the same target. Alright, we're gonna have to... Missile, that's... Uh... Best ditch our target, go for this guy, so... ACM mode, all sight. Come around this guy. And Fox 1. It's tracking. See on the right. Here we go. Looking good. Then he's just turned into it. Splash. Alright, out of burner. So let's come around and check how the other guy's doing. So we've got some friendly flights flying past us. I hope they're the seed flight. So basically we got to strike a uh, systems operations center or something along those lines. However, it is defended by SAM sites and enemy fighters. We just got them through the first line of fighters, but we still got the SAMs to worry about. And those guys should be taking them on in a moment. So let's set up. we got uh, our data link. We've got some unknown contacts ahead of us. I still not spotted our uh I got on a right still on data link, but I suspect he's probably in a lot of trouble, so we'll let him go and let the let our teammates worry about that. Let's bring it around, we're gonna set the radar up. We need to Ram Rams, let's get aim nines. Yeah, out of ACM mode that was it. Alright, so we got two guys in front of us. I'm going to switch the scan down to 60. Got four bars. Got a spike. It's SA6, but we should be out of its range at the moment. We're still quite away from the, uh, the airbase. Just going to play with the radar elevation. We're trying to find these guys that we got on data link. Not sure what altitude they're at just yet. Here we go, we got one. Now the antenna elevation works quite well. It uh, gives you smooth control so you can increase slowly or quickly. It's not a scroll wheel though, so you can't set a specific position or a specific altitude. You have to slew to it. Let's try and lock up our guy, here we go. We are 14 miles out, so still a bit of a ways to go. So our RWR. Oops, we got our countermeasures, so I need to set those quickly. We've got a second guy out there, looks like we've got four guys to our right and this guy down here low. So that's the guy we got targeted. I think... Yeah, we got the far guy targeted. He's probably going to draw us into the SAM range before we can get him, though, I suspect. He's nine and a half miles. Got the airbase on our right coming up to us now. We're getting a bit close. There's a SAM launch actually just off our right. You can see it there. Not going at us though, so we're good for the moment. I think we may have to abandon this guy because he's he's running straight over the airbase. It's going to be difficult to get to him. Got tone. The other MIG's crossing our nose actually, so let's see him goodbye. Let's switch over. We'll lock him. Good tone. And Fox do. And he's trashed our missile already, great. Alright, we need to get a bit close, I'm gonna go for guns. Trigger down. There we go, good hit. But uh, he's still up, I think. Yep. Back into bullseye. 
If I spring over the top, oh, we're losing a lot of airspeed. Burners going again. Let's see if we can hit with missiles. We roll over. Getting a little worried about those SAM sites now. Let's bring back control. We catch him with vertical scan. No. Oh. That's not for us or anything. Oh wow. And our missiles in a moment. There we go. Ah, okay, we're gonna get out of here fast. Fox 2. Yeah, that's coming for us. Pull out defensive, kick some chaff out. See if we can't get him to hit the ground. And yeah, we're good here. We're safe. Defeated one, defeated two. That's the third missile launch, isn't it? It's coming my way. Right turn right, skip behind these hills, block line of sight for the radar. I think we're good. Get under. Right, I think we should be good. Yep, I might ease off the power. Right, that was uh, a little more exciting than I wanted it to be. Right, we're going to pull out and get some distance, climb back up, and then we're going to attack the target with our bombs. Okay, the SAMs are still up. There's a couple. Yeah, that guy just got hit. So we lost one. Yeah, so we are basically running in on our target now. I've got it set in auto mode. We're going to switch to CCIP once I've visually identified it, though, and drop a series of bombs across it. I'm not sure what happened to number one. He's about here somewhere, I hope. All right, let's kick it in and get down. See our target on the diamond. I'm hoping there won't be too much SAM trouble. There is one active site on the right, though. So we need to be mindful of that one. Right, CCIP. See our target just in front. We'll try and walk the bombs across the length of the compound. We're going to need a bit more nose down, I think. Yeah, let's get this set up. Okay, back to 1G and pickle. That should be good. Let's get out of there. Oh, that's a plan. That's a missile. Left a flare. Yeah, we're good. Okay, one more. Uh, okay. Defeated that one last second too. This is real dangerous. Actually, we're out of flares now. Um, and we're too low to climb up to safety. The best bet is just to dive hard and block line of sight. Get down to the building. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, pull. <laughs> okay. We're in one piece, I think. That missed us just by it must have probably fragged us a bit. We're good though, I think. Any holes? No. Let's get down to the rooftops. Break line of sight so we can't fire on us anymore. Just gotta get out of here, get some distance, climb back up, and we'll head back to the tanker. Hitting the tanker, I found the default setup of the stick is not that comfortable to me. This is going to come down to personal taste, but I find it very difficult to make cross-axis inputs. You can make significant adjustment to it, but out the box I find this to not be that great. It is dampened very effectively, coming to a stop when released, but there is a considerable detent as you cross over each axis. It makes fun adjustments a little difficult as you fight both axes at once, and their detents, as well as the uneven response as you bump across them. You can spend hours working on the joystick settings if you desire, and I would recommend it if you want to get the feel just right for you. This is something I will be doing before the full review, but of course getting that set up how you like is going to take a while, which is both a blessing and a curse. 
If you're looking for something accessible out the box, this may not be to your taste unless you enjoy having the heavier detents that make it easy to make single axis movements. The feeling of mechanical movement however is really good. It's smooth and doesn't suffer from any of the dreaded stiction you might get with a standard Warthog base. I can't wait to try and get this tuned up to my liking later. The throttle is brilliant, I've found it much easier to make small corrections, often with standard sized throttles i found myself chopping the throttle up and down repeatedly to create a middle ground between my actions. With the wind wing however you're able to control this much more precisely and it's very easy to add a single knot or take one away once you've gotten the hang of it. Much like adding an extension to your joystick, the greater length on the throttle arm lets you make smaller inputs, giving you a leverage advantage. This is probably my favourite part, both the mechanical movement of the throttle and its detents with the extra throttle range which makes it a joy to use. I think if you're looking for something of a sim cockpit light, this is a great option with the throttle panel combined with the long arm throttles. I've personally toyed with the idea of building a left panel only cockpit, as I don't intend on going the full distance and want to keep my desk as a workstation too, and I can see this throttle becoming a centerpiece of that. The joystick has made a positive impression thus far, although it will be a pain to configure to how I would like it. It's very much something to tinker with, and my only serious complaint is that recce switch. How well I can configure it, that remains to be seen. I'll be working on getting into the finer details, learning and configuring the options, and seeing how it holds up under continued use as part of a proper review later. But until then, if you have any questions, they're more than welcome below, and you can find a link to the WinWing product page in the description. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.